Today we're going to be calculating compression ratio, static compression ratio, on an engine that's already together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill um, a cylinder that's at top dead center, uh, cylinder number one on this engine, this 944 engine, um, with oil. And I'm going to met, you know, calculate how much, how many milliliters of oil I'm putting in until it fills up to the bottom of the spark plug hole and then I'm going to do the same thing for cylinder number two which is all the way at the bottom of its stroke so it's at the maximum volume and then the comparing the ratio of the two volumes will give me the, the compression ratio so there's a few things I've done here to prepare and that is I've actually with my lift I've jacked up one side of the car so the car is really a bit at an angle. Let me see if I can step back to see that. So here the car is um, kind of cocked up at an angle. And what that's doing is that's making the spark plug bore as straight up and down as possible so that it doesn't trap air around the side of the spark plug opening. And the other thing I've done is I've got my, I've got my vacuum pump ready. On the floor here is a vacuum pump. So once I fill the cylinder with oil and I have my measurement, I'm going to then pump all the oil out of the cylinder um, to minimize the amount that seeps past the rings. And obviously I want as much out of the cylinder as possible so that when I do go to turn the engine over, it doesn't hydro lock. The other thing I've done is I've taken off the, the cam, the cam box here. And so this ensures that all of the valves are fully closed. So when I do turn the engine over, um, I'm not going to have an issue. I, I'm not going to need to turn the engine over for doing this measurement, but if I did, I'm not going to have an issue of hitting a, a piston to a valve, and also I don't have to worry about my oil seeping out one of the, um, one of the, either the exhaust port or the intake port because the valves are closed. To put my oil in, um, I've been to my local pharmacy and they've given me some different size syringes so this way uh, hopefully the process will go somewhat quickly. On the cylinder that's at top dead center I think I'm going to start off using the, the 20 milliliter syringe here. You know I'm going to be able to suck up 20 milliliters, make sure it's exactly 20, squirt it in the spark plug hole and keep track of how many go in. So I've checked that the engine is at TDC on the flywheel and I'm not sure if the camera can pick up in the hole here, but you can see the piston is pretty close to the to the bottom of the spark plug hole. First uh, dose, 20 millimeters of oil in the syringe. Getting it right down the hole. And squeeze it in. Now to do that a few more times. It was hard to see where the bottom of the spark plug threads were, so I filled it up to the top of the spark plug threads, and then I'll be able to measure the diameter and the length of the spark plug and subtract that volume from my calculation. So this took five syringe fulls plus 19 milliliters. So I guess that's 119 milliliters. Looking at another head that's off of a car, I can see that in the orientation I have the engine with the spark plug hole pointed straight up and down, there's actually like a little bit of a volume up at the top that's going to be filled with air that the oil's not going to get to before it goes out the spark plug hole. So what I've done is I've taken some of my kids' Play-Doh modeling clay and I've tried to approximate, you know, what that cylinder it's going to be like. So, you know, here if the plug hole is going straight down, you know, this area around there, um, you know, won't be accounted for by my oil method. Again, when the head was upside down. It's just that 
it's easier to look at and talk about when it's in this orientation. So I use Play-Doh to, to fill this gap up and now we can see that you know this is um, that kind of volume that's unaccounted for. So there's a few ways I can measure the volume of my Play-Doh. One would be to you know form it into a, a sphere or a cube and measure it and calculate the volume that way. But probably the most accurate because of the kind of irregular surfaces is the displacement method. Ideally, if I had a graduated cylinder, you know, a long tube that had markings on it for the amount of liquid, you would fill it up with, you know, I don't know, to a certain line, drop this in it, this would make the water rise or the liquid rise, and that would be the volume of, of your piece. Um, but I'm going to try to do that with the syringe here. So I have molded this so it's a little narrower so it'll fit inside the syringe. And again, the syringe goes up to 20 milliliters. So um, now that I have it in there, I can use my other syringe and fill it up with oil. Now I have 5 milliliters of fluid in here. I'm going to hold my finger over the bottom of this one and start filling this up. And ideally, I'm going to take my finger off the bottom to let the, uh, the air come out. So that has taken seven and a half milliliters plus my Play-Doh to equal 20. So that means the Play-Doh is going to be 12 and a half milliliters in size. Instead of filling up a cylinder that was at bottom dead center with oil, I decided to use the bore and stroke numbers to figure out the volume of the piston displacement, and I was able to then calculate our compression ratio that way. So one value was the bore and stroke volume plus the combustion chamber volume, which in addition to the oil we calculated by subtracting the spark plug opening and adding the Play-Doh amount, the part that the oil didn't get to. And the other was only the combustion chamber volume. And I was able to do the ratio divide one by the other, and that gave me my compression ratio.